guys, how's it going? James here from Bomber Parts of Coding UK. Today I'm going to talk to you using the system that we've got here behind us that I lovingly built over the last few days. What considerations you should have when installing a digital shower. We're going to be doing that using this unvented cylinder that we've got installed behind us. We're going to install the whole thing. We're going to talk about the electrics, orientations and one thing as well. And I'm going to ask you at the end how many times I say this. We're going to read the instructions. The shower system that we're going to use to fit this particular product today is Crosswater. We're also going to have a quick look at some of the things that Crosswater do to make the install of a digital shower easier. There's going to be some links at the end of this video that only people who have watched the whole video will be able to click. But along the way, please do like, please comment if you think we've missed anything out or you've got any questions. And also please subscribe as well by hitting that subscribe button. Anyway, let's get on with the video, guys. And remember, there's one thing you got to do. Ha! Ah! Hold tight, guys. Oh, yes. Oh, yes and scrub George on the belly as well. Right then guys, so as you can see behind me, we've got a tank set up. We're only gonna be heating up the water from an immersion heater. But out of that tank, we've got our water coming through a balanced supply, which means we've got a cold and a hot water that is the same pressure. And we're gonna talk about that in a sec. And guess what? At the end of it, because this is a fully working shower we've got here, I'm gonna be able to use it with a bit of a payoff of maybe some naked body. So let's work through this subject in some really simple stages. Stage number one, what is a digital shower? A traditional shower valve will usually be inside the wall, directly where you're turning on and off the water with your hands in the shower. That means you've got a physical shower valve turning it on and off, and also when you move a thermostat with your hand, you're moving the mechanics to change the mixed water temperatures and the flows directly in the shower. Digital showers do all the physical mixing of the water hot and cold and the flow regulation from a small box, usually away from where you're showering. There'll be a digital interface in the shower, and don't be scared by that. A digital interface can literally be a knob that you twist just like in traditional showers but rather than doing it physically by that knob the knob will actually send a signal through a wire digitally back to the box to tell the digital control box that you want the water hotter or colder or that you want the flow this or that or if you've got say a controller that's got a bath outlet that you want it to go to the bath outlet really really simple so that's the difference between a digital shower and a traditional one the mixing is done remotely away and all the interface and inputs that you put in are transmitted digitally rather than actually inside the valve itself. Read the instructions before you even get to choosing your shower. If you've completely gutted your bathroom, find the shower that you want and read the instructions on it online. So you'll be able to find out exactly what physical requirements you need in your bathroom before you've even put a tile down. Crosswater, for example, say that if you're going to use an unvented or a pressurized digital shower of theirs, it has to be on a balanced supply. When I spoke to the guys at Crosswater over the phone about this, they said, Jimmy, when we do get a rare problem with one of our products, it's usually because there's a problem with the pressures. And it's always to do with the fact that the person who was installing it did not read the instructions and they piped up the hot and cold on an unbalanced feed. We'll talk about that in a minute when we're actually installing this crosswater shower. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna find that the feeds come down are gonna be in 15 millimeter. When it comes to electrical connections, make sure that you read the instructions yet again. Make sure that you carry out any electrical work legally, get an electrician to come in and do it for you. Every digital shower that I've ever installed needs a 240 volt connection in the UK. So make sure you do that. Sometimes you'll have straight wired in few spurs and some like the crosswater one that we're fitting today, which actually has a plug on it and a transformer going into the unit. Research physically where you want to install your shower, where you want to install your controller, and where you also want to have the digital controller box sighted. That's because most controllers require a wire or a lead that goes from the digital interface inside the shower back to the actual box. Find out from the manufacturer how long their lead is. Crosswater's leads are 10 meters long. And also, get this plumbers, and you'll know where I'm coming from here, and also Sparkies, it doesn't matter which way round the lead is. You don't have a controller end and a digital box end. It doesn't matter, they're just either end. The same goes if you are gonna have a remote button, and that is a button, say, that's outside the shower, so you can turn that on and warm the shower up before you get in there. Make sure that the lead will reach all the way back. That's 10 meters long on a crosswater as well, and it has the same things, either end, it doesn't matter. When it comes to outlets, it depends on how many outlets you have. The one thing I say you should do, and I clarified this with crosswater, is to use flexies. This is a rare thing for me to say 
on the outlets. This is because most shower manufacturers don't want you putting threads in on the threads of their actual control box. Uh, it can put the plastic under a lot of stress. If you use flexible connectors, you're gonna have a rubber straight seal on there. You won't have to do it up so tight and there won't be a risk it may be breaking something at that point of the installation process. Now we're gonna have a look at exactly where we're gonna install it and we're gonna plan out our installation accordingly whilst reading the instructions and making sure we do it right. Let's get on with it. You're gonna get inside. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. Oh, wow, yes I can. <laughs> Can't believe I just did that. Now, I want you to take notice of this here. These two bits of paper are this color because you have to read them. And they've added this on because these bits were also in the booklet underneath and people weren't reading them. Instructions, if you're a bloke, throw them away. If you're a woman, read them fully through and do it right the first time. Oh yeah? Right, so what you're gonna get in here, you've got the digital controller as well. So we've got our hot and cold in, and then we've got shower one, shower two. Now, like I said, the Crosswater also make one that's like a bath filler and a shower head as well. So look at the ones you want, they do all that. So we've got our power connection here with our little Diddy transformer as well. We've got our control plate, okay? This is a really cool little thing. We'll be having a look at that in a sec. And also we've got our lead with the amazing lanyard idea that I just think is amazing. I really do, I love it. Small screws that if you're a plumber, you'll know we're gonna throw these away. We don't ever use the screws that are supplied. We always use the ones that we're comfortable using. And then we've got our flow regulator pack. This is for use on systems where you've got a combi boiler that really just doesn't have the guts to, to get that flow of water through in time. And another thing Crosswater don't know, <laughs> this here is a perfect knee pad. So guys, what's the first thing we're actually going to get out of the box? Yes, you've guessed it. We're gonna get out the instructions. <laughs> notes on connecting your digital valve, okay? Look into that. Also important notes on cold mains pressure. Right guys, so the water connections going to any kind of digital shower have to be balanced. So look, let's have a look at a system that's piped up wrong. So as you can see from this system here, we're drawing the hot water through our combination valve, which in turn reduces the pressure to three and a half bar and then gets heated up and then out of the hot outlet off to our digital shower. But this person here has teed off their cold feed to the digital shower before the combination valve. That means that at night or at any other time, you could have a pressure there that is not three and a half bar or below. Sometimes it go up to seven bar or eight bar or nine bar or 10 bar. If you have those pressures different, you'll you're going to find that your shower will not be able to mix the water properly. It will pulse, it will go hot and cold, and it's all because you didn't read the instructions. So what we've got here, we've got our cold feed coming in here. Let's just say, for instance, this cold feed is 10 bar. Now, if we were Mr. or Mrs. Idiot, and we teed off our cold feed here, we'll know that that's now an unregulated feed. So we're gonna bring it down into our combination valve. Now, at this point here, the combination valve reduces the pressure to roughly three and a half bar, depending on what combination valve you have. Now we have our cold feed going down into our hot water tank. That's gonna be heated up, come out of this pipe here, and then go down to our shower valve at three and a half bar. But also, because we've taken our cold feed just off here, that's also going to be three and a half bar. So guess what? We've now got a seesaw that's balanced. Three and a half bar either side, hot and cold, going down to our digital shower. Another thing that people find is a problem when they're doing this is that they often take the feeds for the hot and cold to the digital shower like last. What I mean by that is you've got 15 meters of cold feed that's nicely balanced already, but you've got a tee off to a bath, a tee off to a toilet, a tee off to uh, the washing machine, things like that. You want to try and tee off the feed to the digital shower first. So if any of those other things open up, it doesn't pinch the flow. And we all know what happens guys, if we're in the shower and someone flushes the loo, yes, exactly. Usually you're going to get scolded. Fortunately, you won't get that in the crosswater shower because they've got protection for scolding built into it anyway. Also, it's RASA proof. Thought I'd just pop that in. When it comes to gravity-fed digital showers, the difference is with them, they've got a small little pump in there to pump through and get the pressure up. You need to make sure you've got enough head for that digital shower to work. The more head you've got, the better the low-pressure version of this is going to work. So you can install the digital valve like this on the floor in this orientation, or like this on the wall in this orientation, but no other way. If you do it another way, it voids the warranty, it voids the guarantee, it's wrong. Do it right. Read the instructions. If you're using a low pressure digital valve, you will only be allowed to install it flat on the floor in the first orientation. Before sighting the digital valve, make sure that the control wires will reach the control unit inside the shower itself and also to the remote shower control should you choose to have one. Yes. 
fully follow the instructions while you're installing the digital shower valve on the wall and make sure that you use a spirit level as well. Only use push fit connectors on the inlets because we've got plastic here guys we don't want to be over tightening and compression fitting onto these and then crushing that plastic and causing a leak also make sure if you've got any low points at this particular bit that you've got drain offs in the right place we want to make servicing this unit easier for any engineers who might come along in the future and talking of servicing the inlets already have an integral non-return valve and filter that you can easily remove with the clip to service Try to use your pipe bender wherever possible to do nice sweat bends. That will keep the flow rate up to and from the unit. So reading the instructions, Crosswater say that we should use flexible connectors just like this one here with a rubber o-ring inside. So when we tighten up onto the plastic nut for our outlets, we don't overstress it. Now that's great for you guys, DIYs and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. The problem is as a plumber, I'm not a massive fan of flexies. I try to stay away from them. There's no problem with pre-making up your own sort of mini flexi connector that goes onto copper pipe. As a plumber, I'm a lot more happy doing this because I know then that I'm not gonna get any split flexibles down the line or anything like that. I just need to solder on my copper first, cool it down, put my rubber o-ring on here. Then I can connect that to the underside of the crosswater valve as well. So there are different ways of doing it. If you're not happy with doing that way, by all means do what the instructions say and do it like that. But there's nothing wrong with doing this as well as long as you don't overstress the plastic joint on the bottom. So then guys, we've got our pipe work connections in, we've got our shower heads up and everything. We're ready to go. It's worth noting on the Crosswater Digital Shower, the outlet number one is the default outlet, the one that's gonna come on first. So I'll put that into the pan head and outlet number two is gonna go to our handheld. So the electrical connections couldn't get much easier with this. We've got a transformer and we've got a plug. That's literally it. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're complying with the electrical regulations in your local area. If you're not sure about anything, get a qualified electrician to come in and do it for you. Obviously your control wire should be installed before you do any tiling and stuff like that, but I'm hoping you're going to watch all of this video before you actually start tackling the install of a digital shower. Also, when you're installing the control wire, don't sandwich it in underneath the tiles inside the tile adhesive. Make sure you chase out a proper chase for it and use 22mm plastic pipe as a duct. So if you do need to change your control wire in the future for any reason, it's really easy to do. Guys, I've stopped the music at this point because you are now looking at my favouritest bit, if that is a word, of the crosswater design for their digital showers. The amount of hours of design that must have gone into this is absolutely brilliant just to make it easier for us installers. We've got this lanyard on here which means we can tie a string to that and pull it through cavities or wherever we need to go. This can be this end this can, and the other end can be at the controller end or vice versa and then all we need to do is just unclip it. So much better isn't it than getting like sellotape or insulation tape trying to get that on a string and halfway in the pull through on the cavity that comes off. It's so annoying. All we need to do is we just pop this little cap off here and then pop that in there like that and that's it, it's done. To reiterate, it doesn't matter which end of the cable you use for each end of the controller. And also, if you've got two controllers, use the top port like I have for your main controller and then the port below for your remote control outside of the shower. Right then, everybody. So we're inside at shower bit here. All right, no. Let's do this in a normal accent. Some of you are going to say, well, how do I install this? Well, if you read the instructions, yeah, you'd know already that you need to drill a 25 millimeter hole there. And you also know, therefore, that Crosswater have left a nice little handy drilling guide in the back of the instructions. So leave yourself a nice 25 millimeter hole in either your tiling or like we've got here for our demonstration in the board and then later on in the job once you're ready to fix the controller to the wall make sure you put a nice bead of silicon in the groove on the back of the controller you'll also notice there's a nice red cap there to protect the controller plug and then when you're physically ready to install the controller make sure you pull the red plug off and insert the cable and then screw the controller to the wall it now takes just three grub screws to attach our decorative plate and control knobs to Crosswater's interface and the installation of the remote button is identical it's worth noting that the decorative plates and buttons and knobs are all made of solid brass and chrome plated so they're really good quality as well. Now that we've done all that we're ready to do the very last bit and also the bit that people tend to get wrong the most, commissioning. We've just spent ages getting this whole job done, we just want to turn that shower on, feel that hot water coming through and everything but we have to follow the instructions when it comes to this bit because if we don't we could end up ruining this brand new product that we've just installed. For instance we need to flush the pipe work through before we put anything in, we need to make sure that our filters are clean and everything as well and then we need to follow the step-by-step -step procedure laid out in the instructions to commission this piece and actually get it running. Also guys just check out how easy it is for you to change the decor over so if you do want to update the decor on your shower it's three grub screws off and three grub screws on. Whoa look at that! <laughs> just, 
He really is balmy having a shower in the studio. The hot and cold light display will tell you whether it's looking for heat or looking for cooling and then when it's made temperature it will go white. The flow display on the bottom is self-explanatory. To divert to the handset simply push the divert knob. In addition to the quadrant shower tray that's got that lovely single door type which is the one that I prefer, I've also got a crosswater Kai tray that's got a lovely texture for your feet and will stop you slipping over and a wicked vortex waste as well which is great because it has a shallower profile and makes it easier to install under the floor. So there you go guys, all done. We've got this lovely shower installed here. We've got our unvented Kingspan beast over here pumping in lovely balanced hot and cold water straight into our crosswater valve, which is gonna be absolutely fantastic. It's properly installed. I know we said about the flexes, but as a plumber, I much prefer to use my method, but guys, you have to follow Crosswater's instructions. If you use one where the nut travels freely away from the pipe like I did, you'll be fine. Just remember, don't over tighten anything. You don't need to if you're doing flat faces on rubber seals because they've got a lot of give. Do them up so they're nice and sort of soft. That's what I'd say. You'll probably find that the seal is made and they'll be okay. Thanks very much for watching today's video, guys. For those of you who've watched all the way to the end, there'll be some special links. Make sure you click that link over to my vlog channel, Times with James, and also subscribe. We've got over 300 videos on YouTube all about plumbing, so there's loads for you to look at. Hit that like button and comment below as well if you think we've missed anything out or if you've got any questions. The guys at Crosswater and I will be looking as well and we'll try and help you out. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in next week's video. I mean, did you really think I was going to install that whole shower and not even use it? Now I've just got my little ladder out because I'm going to need it. I'm going to need it for what's coming next. Oh. Boys back, suck it in. <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to do this. Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, I can honestly tell I oh. It's a really good shower. So there you go guys, I don't think you're ever going to be able to unsee that ever again. Please click the links that are appearing around right now. Remember to pop over to Times of James. Remember to click that subscribe button as well because we got loads of videos on plumbing. And remember to pop over and check out Crosswater's website too for more information. Thanks for watching, see you next week.